Okay, so just gonna have a quick look at tuning vocals in uh, Cubase. I've got 9.5 right now, but they're, it's been the same. I've been using a five up to 9.5, and it's been going on the same way, and I think it's the same in 10.5. Uh, so basically, you get this grid. You know, uh, Before you start, for people who don't know where it is, you double-clicking on your track that you wanna tune, go in the side menu here, hit Vary Audio, then you'll do pitch warp, and then it's going to load and find all your um, all your pitches. And then what we do, they've already started here, so we just go, we skim through, and then you can move up and down. You can move these notes up and down, and that's your pitch uh, correction tool. So it's not an automatic pitch corrector. You, uh, I think the same engine works as a plugin as well, so they can uh, correct in real time, which I don't think is as smooth. I haven't used it in 9.5, but uh, back in 5, it was really... Well, it really didn't do the job for me. But right now, what's cool is you, had a, you have a few basic functions. And um, with those, you can do pretty much, I can always do anything I need to do with uh, the vocals. So let's go find a few notes here. So let's say we got these notes here. I want to tune these. Um, Control, uh, command, click, drag, and it's going to lock to the note. Command, click, drag, it's going to lock. All three. Shift, click, drag, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just go in, uh, we'll just move freely. Um, and then you can select your note, you can straighten the pitch or not. And you can, if, if you don't, if you're not in uh, the proper position, I think the same as uh, shift, click, would be quantize pitch basically. So you can just lock it directly. Another thing that's cool here is you can move your audio around. So that's pretty practical when you're tuning back vocals and you notice one like peer or one accent is off. Instead of going back and cutting your clip and once you cut the clip it splits up these regions here so it, you have to bounce from clip to clip to go. Uh, I'll show you for example. So if I cut this here and here. So when I'm over here we only have this region active. And if I tune on this end, it's not going to affect this clip. It's only going to have affect this clip if I peel it back. So I got to go and click on this other cli uh, clip to go back. So, so basically, this avoid you know this function here. We got to stay on on pitch warp. Doing this of is a way to avoid having to bounce from clip to clip. Although it is using time stretch, uh, the yeah the time stretch algorithm, whatever it is. Um, you can segment, click here, and then you can cut. You gotta go on this little line, cut a clip, and then you can separate. What I do a lot, whenever I want to tune something like this, I don't just straighten it out because it gets glitchier, so I'll cut it in sections, which seem to average out in the same areas, you know, which seem to keep a relative pitch line. And uh, then I'll go and lock those into place, and I'll have a listen to make sure it's not glitching. Listen in solo and with the band. That's all my that's all my before and after. That's all my. That's all my. That's all my. To make sure we're not hearing any, it it you know when when the pitch goes off when the the machine's working too hard you hear all these like, um like throat glitches it sounds like um like the singer could need to clear his throat and that's really not super uh, fun to listen to, so. One thing that happens a lot is when I get tracks, when I get uh, tracks to mix and the vocals have been tuned, they haven't been done with enough attention. I hear this shit all over the place all the time. Be careful. Be very attentive when you do this tuning because you're fucking up someone's vocal. For like That's just unacceptable to me. So basically, as I'm moving around, as I'm tuning... You know, this sounds a bit mechanical, so we'll go back with the tune. And uh, what you can do as well. So I got these shortcuts set up here. I got I set up Q to go to pitch warp and W to do segment, so I can bounce between the two because it was a lot of clicking back and forth. You can set them up in your key commands here by searching those functions, pitch warp and segment. Uh, but we're not going to get into this. Um, so what I would do with these three, we can reset pitch and warp change. Have a listen to it. Oops, wrong key. 
ceux qui vendent des armes. Also, when you're in a track like this, all you gotta do is press S and your things. Ceux qui vendent des armes. Ceux qui vendent des armes. So. Ceux qui vendent des armes. See, that's pushing too much. I don't. Ceux qui vendent des armes. And since, see, this is one that I, I might, like, just straighten up a bit. It's good to do this without verb as well. You know, it's good to keep these subtle variations too, because it's uh, kind of the tonal character of the vocals. Or else it can get too straight. Yeah, see, like, I just want to, oftentimes, you know, I don't want to make it sound perfect in, like, perfectly in pitch. All I want to do is to make sure it, um, the singer at least reaches the notes because a lot, of, I do a lot of, um, acoustic folk, um, like live band stuff. I don't do a lot of production or, or pop. And there's much more of an organic feel. It sounds really weird if we tune this stuff, like, perfectly. It just, it's not the way it should sound. So, I just want to make sure this average, you know, it just works with, uh, now, you know, it depends, it depends what singer you're tuning to. So, you know, we're doing a full album, so I'm listening to all the tunes and deciding what is, like, the best combination of tuning for, for each, you know, for, for this uh, particular singer. I don't want to push him too much. Because then also you you don't want to have a clash when they do a live show, when they, they do the album launch, people have listened to the album and then, you know, you've tuned the hell out of it. And then it's it's just not, you know, it, it's not in the same character as the singer would perform live or he wouldn't hit the same pitches, you know, so. Let's see here. Yeah, see here we hear it. I, I, I can't do this. This is a kind of tensioning the vocal cords it, it feels I think sometimes you get the right note See, this is off so we got to decide like which is the best of you know what's our best choice so we can't be a semitone off let's see how far we can push it without us hearing hearing the, the, the machine working so let's go back it's only got to be better, you know? So the vocals get a little bit cloudier. I'm not sure that's... Like I'm not super down with that, but... Another thing that fucks up a pitch here often is when it... You know, this might sound more off if this one pushes higher than it should. So oftentimes I find... The note that approaches the next might sound off because the next note is actually off as well. So there, it could be playing some uh, some tricks on you. I see that sounds weird. Go down. Yeah, sounding weird. So some of this stuff is hard, harder to tune than 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 others. Like some some tunes are like. Some vocals are kind of touchy because they'll be really sensitive to the pitch and some you can really do uh, be pretty aggressive with them and then it's fine. Back vocals, I find I can be much more aggressive because they're hiding behind a lead vocal oftentimes. So then, or if they're in a group or something like that, you can really like, push them a lot more because you're not going to hear it as much. So maybe what I would do, hmm, still having a hard time with this one here, you know. It's cool, let's just hear it, maybe it's gonna be cool. See what happens here. Yeah, this still sounds a bit sharp. Push this up a bit, this might be reaching too much. Let's, we might need to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, a bit flat. 
we'll just, you know, Black. often I'll just lock it to, to have a listen to how it sounds when it's right on, because the band might not be like straight on 440. I haven't checked whether we can change this grid, because now I, I think we're locking on 440, all our, our notes here. So I haven't checked if we can like drop it a few cents, or there must be a way to, to tune down this, this whole grid. So we get a back vocal here on top that's kind of off, so let's just focus on the lead. Yeah. So, you kind of get the point. I could go on, like, see, something like this might take me, I don't know, man, I didn't take too much time usually, but we can do it. Like, I can spend. Like, it depends who I'm working with. I can spend quite a bit of time on, on tuning a vocal, especially if we're doing a whole album. What we'll do is we'll do, like, okay, we'll, we'll just take a chunk of time that'll be dedicated to tuning all vocals once everything's like cleaned up printed all the edits are done we've, cho we've chosen our takes made sure all the crossfades are fine one by one making sure everything is is well cut no clicks and pops print then we'll get into vocals do the whole album it'll be like that's like the painful part of the album that's the shit that gives you carpal tunnel you know because you're just clicking away non-stop so you gotta be careful you gotta take breaks when you do this i've, I've gotten issues from um from editing and doing uh tuning too much but um that's why i got these mouse these uh mice i guess left and right like ergonomic mouse so i can trade but um but yeah that's how tuning works in cubase and uh, i find it works great for me man i haven't i've worked with uh with melodyne i think at the studio i've worked with uh, different uh different tuners and um you know i, I have this one i don't have a reason I don't have a reason to buy another one. This has done the job for me. It, maybe I don't think it's as good as other tuners, but uh, I've always been able to lock my pitch without hearing any artifacts. And uh, and yeah, and it doesn't take too much time, and I can really do it precisely. Cool. Thanks for watching. Enjoy tuning. <laughs>